Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. I'm Carl and today we're going to do something completely different away from the 737 Sim. We are going to build a 3D model jet engine. All the parts are printed, it's taken about a week to do the printing. The parts are ingenious, they look fantastic. It really is a good design and the guys that design this, I believe it's Bob Wiley and Chris Shackle. It's a free design from GrabCAD. I'll put the link in the description below. If you like this design once it's built, I highly recommend it. These guys know exactly what they're doing. It's just a phenomenal build. To my right is my laptop. That's got the Fusion design on it and hopefully we can work out how this thing goes together. And here we have the compressor casing. And what I want to show you is what's ingenious about this design and how it's catered for 3D printing. <clears throat> it's the designers have removed the need for supports up the casing. So rather than print this in one go, they printed it in two so there's no support required, which gives it a perfect finish top and bottom. And also the parts have locating spigots so they can go only go on one way. One final part of the design that's really ingenious is the way that these two clip together and they physically do clip together. It seems like there's a rim that has like a ball fitting and then the outer part has a cup. So when they go together, they grasp each other and there's a definite satisfying click when you get them in the right position and they clip into position and then they're actually rock solid the way they clip together. Of course, we're gonna use some super glue to make it even stronger. So next up are the compressor stators and rotors. These are the stators here. These are resin printed as well as the rotors here. These were printed in white and then sprayed silver. And because this was my first resin print of this design, I made a few errors. And hopefully you can see, ah yes, that's probably a better choice. Now, when I selected support on my slicing program, I added supports to every single fan blade and that just wasn't required. Hence, there was too many supports, and when I broke them off, I broke a couple of blades. For the time being, that will do. We can always come back and reprint these better at a later point. So we'll start with the smallest first. And these should just slide into position. Like so. And now we've got the spool shaft and that has to fit through the center. Like so. Just gonna add some super glue to secure it. And there we've got the compressor spool already built. Time for a little confession. And I forgot to order the correct bearings. I thought I had them, I didn't. So, so I tried to 3D print them and they turned out exceptionally well. They will do now until the real ones arrive, which for me will be a couple of weeks. And that is hopefully gonna slide into the end. I'm going to put this unit to one side and we're going to concentrate on the combustion chamber next. Again, I'm just going to super glue the rim to the top. Looking at the locating lug, which is there. And now we've got to fit the inlet guide vanes. Oh, 
perfect. As you just saw, the combustion chamber liner slotted straight in. Now it's time to fit the fuel nozzles and they should slide in from the side and into the combustion chamber liner like so. I've just made sure that all the nozzles are facing the same direction and that's towards the rear of the combustion chamber. So now we're going to marry these two sections up and I'm only going to put a few bolts in because I actually do want to take this apart later on and uh, make it better really. The geeky side of me, I want to fit red LEDs into the fuel nozzles so it lights up the combustion chamber. But hopefully it'll make the model look well, a little bit more special. That already is looking pretty good. Just gonna consult the laptop again and see what the next part is, or what I think is the next part. Okay, well that's a bit of a boo-boo because that needs to go on there. Just trying to install the uh, HP turbine here, and this would have been a lot easier if I put this on first. Just like the real thing, there's some difficult bolts to get to. Now we're going to put our other 3D printed bearing in the opposite end. That pushes in there, free to rotate. Is it just me or does that look really cool already? I love it. I'm going to put it to one side and we're going to switch to the turbine casing and assembly. Starting with the rim once more. Good layer of super glue to secure it on. This is going to be the LP shaft and I'm just going to put some M4 screws in there to hold it together. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what the best way to put these together are and there's definitely a set pattern to get these in and that will certainly wouldn't be it. It's going to have to be this one. Oh. Okay, so I have made my first boo-boo. I've incorrectly assembled the LP shaft. And of course I've super glued the spool together already. Rubbish. It shouldn't be a problem. It, I think it's just gonna mean that it's gonna be rather difficult to put this back together. So it's not as bad as I thought, thank goodness. Those two parts go together like so. Then this part goes up on top. Just drill these holes out. Two, three, four. Basically what we're doing is we're joining these together to form a unit. And then that spool fits inside the remainder of the shaft. Hopefully that's a bit better. So that in theory, yeah, is gonna go through there 
into there. Now to solving this part, we know that's going to go in there like that. We can definitely put the first set of veins in. So there's the first stator row in. Second row. You've probably figured out that I am winging this and uh, <laughs> there's probably some build instructions somewhere that I should have read. I'm just using that part for support, nothing else, while I try and figure out how to build the remainder part. After a lot of faffing, it is a bit tight and it rubs, but once we get the bearings on there, we can let it spin, rotate it with a bit of force and make it wear where it needs to be. I think it's time now to mount the turbine assembly to the compressor assembly. There's the core of the engine built. Let's put this to one side and concentrate on the big fan at the front. Got a bit of a damaged print here, which I'm not too happy with. Just see if we can correct that a bit. Ideally, this part probably does require reprinting. So the first job is to stick the rim to the case unit. Now I believe this part needs a bearing. That's going to slot in like that and then glue this part in. I'm going to put that to the front. Now to make the fan shaft. Now I am actually putting nuts on these because I do not want this fan assembly to shoot out if I do decide to attach a rather large motor to the back of it. However, these fan blades are rather delicate. Here's the spinner. I think it's going to push the cone into the end, the silver cone. And I think this will should just clip on the front and it does. That is another cool part done. I'm dying to see what this looks like. It's got a nice big hefty bearing in here, which means I can spin it fast. Oh wow. I have this huge urge now. I can feel the amount of air coming from the back of it. It's, it's quite impressive because it's just a plastic fan. I have this real big urge to stick a drill on the end to see how fast I can spin it. Is that going the right way? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's as fast as the drill goes. And I think that's about 2000 RPM. It does actually create quite a lot of uh, thrust, not thrust, a lot of airflow. Very little thrust. In a later episode, I can see me attaching a big electric motor to this 
and just to see how fast it can go before it explodes but not yet not before I finish building it so now that I've stopped playing let's build the front cowling assembly and let me see what we need okay again got to glue the rim to the casing Everything about this engine is just so cool. Because it uses a 6204 bearing, it's a huge bearing, it is super smooth and quiet. And just turning it by hand, you can feel the airflow come out the back. Bear in mind, this is not my design, this is somebody else's design, but I'm having great fun building it. Of course, I really want to see the front on. That's probably what we'll do next. And this is the intake cowling. Let me see how this attaches. Seriously, how cool is that? I mean, look at the size of it. It just keeps getting better and better. Here's the Allen key drive that I've been using to spin it up with the drill. And hopefully this is going to slide over the top. Straight in. Should attach something like Aha, that way around, I hope. So, would I be right in saying that that way around? So, we've got to get these engine nacelle brackets onto here and it's all getting a bit tight especially for my large hands but let's see what we can do if you're wondering why i'm using a big pair of pliers to do a, a four millimeter screw up it's because i really don't have any spanners that small not yet anyway Let's get the exhaust nozzle on and the exhaust casing. Let's try and not put this in the way. Okay, once again, need some super glue. The edge. Match up the locating lugs. Naturally stuck my finger to the unit. And again, I think this is the last bearing of the unit. And that is never gonna fit in there. Let's just hope it's got a bit of a lip. That's got it. Yeah. What a perfect fit. And this hopefully is going to go on. Oh, yes. This goes on there.
This base plate mounts the motor to drive the unit and also the exhaust nozzle or the exhaust cone which forms part of the exhaust. So this should fit over like that. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> This goes on there, little screws, big hands, they're just a nightmare. Glad that's not a real engine and I've just dropped a screw into it. <laughs> However, I have done that in my past. Okay. I'm trying not to say how cool does that look? but it does look cool. That's the guts of the engine created. Now, if you just twist the cone off, how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna invert it like that. Can you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> I'm gonna insert this up the rear and then just gently going to bed in the rotors. You can see the dust coming off. Oh, there we go. You can hear it getting faster as the parts wear in. It's creating quite a bit of a draft back here. Okay, let's slow it down. And we'll go again. I guess now it's time to build the nacelle and the cowlings that go around it. Let's see how simple that bit is. So I'm having to switch to countersink screws now. I've run out of the dome heads. So I was wondering what these holes were for in the front of the casing here. Can you see that on camera? Yes, you can. This is the forward fairing mount. Oh, it's going to be a tight fit though. It's looking good. Found a secret stash of black dome head screws. Hopefully this will finish the job off. These are the cowling hinges, and I believe, looking at the diagram, they go like that. Now it's time to start fitting some of the fairings and will I get this on in situ? No, no I won't. Oh, I will. I can take the nozzle off. fairing on. Now I do believe this is supposed to be held on with magnets. I don't have magnets. So I 
<laughs> I can see some glue sorting this one out. While that's drying, I'll move it to one side again and concentrate on the rear fairings and the forward fairings, really. Now, I somehow have to get this tiny three millimetre nut in there where my fingers are never going to fit. Let's see if double sided tape can help out. One done. I can't believe that works. Awesome. Let's see if I can get this bar into that hinge. And the last two engine doors. There's today's build, the turbo fan. I think it looks absolutely awesome. So much detail in every part. An amazing bit of kit. Hats off to Bob Wiley and Chris Shackle who designed this. I'll leave the link in the description as I said before. Catch you later guys. Sim out from Brunei. Enjoy.